Hello ladies and gents, welcome to Detecting World Review channel and today I'm going to be reviewing the waterproof Nocta Macro children's detector it's called the Midi Horde now the first thing I want to show you is just a nice colour quite an attractive detector for a child now what you can do with this detector as well you can also adjust the stem length so all you do is pull this little lever out and then slide just using one hand slide the bottom stem out of the top stem and it's got uh, little markings on there one two three um all the way up to max of six and then it goes max and then you just lock it back out again so that will adjust the length of the stem the coil is just as you'd expect just a bolt going through and then screwed on as so and obviously you can make that as stiff or as loose as you want to as you would normal detector so i thought i'd just show you that so that if you've got a taller child or as they grow then you can adjust the height of the detector and get full use out of it nice little feature now it takes two aa batteries and what you have to do is unscrew this screw take this knob off and put the batteries and they go straight down the tube here now what i would say is a child won't be able to do that so that is the first semi-negative thing about this machine is that an adult will have to do the batteries unless the child is sort of 11 12 13 year old so um that's the first point i'm going to make so let's move on this review is going to be done in two parts i'm just going to show you the features of the machine first and then we're going to do an air test on lots of different targets so first off switch the machine on very easy just hold this button down here and that turns the machine on now the features on here are very 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 simple first off volume you can adjust the volume by holding this button on the left down it's got two volume channels one and two so it's on two at the moment as you can see there so if you hold this button down down to one so if you want to save battery you can turn the volume down to one or if you want to hear it loud and clear hold it down and you've got two volume now next up is the feature that we've got on here is sensitivity or depth now as you can see we've got a detector coil there with two lines underneath to um, indicate the depth if you like again depth or sensitivity now same button again whereas we held it down for the volume you just tap this button and it will change the sensitivity so we're on two at the moment tap three that's full sensitivity and then you've got one two and three so three settings for sensitivity so again you could save on power of the batteries if you wanted to if you're on a beach perhaps and you just wanted um, to coin hunt you could turn that down to two but I'd recommend having it on three as it's a children's detector at all times um, and like I say the battery might um, go down a bit quicker but at least you know you've gotten full power out of that so thirdly we've got three programs on this machine we've got these three boxes here this one is ferrous metals so this will light up red um, when you hit a target in the ferrous section so she screws um, and horseshoes and things like that and then the next two i'd recommend digging everything out of the next two um, in the manual it does sort of go through low value coins for instance on the middle setting 
and then high and low value coins on the third setting amongst other things but what i would say is that anything in these two boxes could be good so make sure that you dig everything in these two boxes and i'll show you what it does in a minute when you go over a target because it does actually um uh show something in the middle of the box just sort of emblems in the middle of the box but um like i say this one will uh, go red this one will go yellow and this one will go green and that is basically on that little light there and it will it will squeak differently as well for each box again i'll demonstrate that in a second okay now if you wanted to um discriminate any of these boxes out if you wanted to discriminate out all the ferrous metals again this button here tap that and that takes that box out tap it again it'll take that box out and then tap it again i'll put them both back in so it's got a discrimination setting on it again i would ever only ever recommend perhaps discriminating the bottom the bottom one just if you're a child you know i don't know if they want to hear all the ferrous metals but it might be exciting for them to do so especially if they're not hitting many good targets right so just before we go over a couple of targets um you've got the battery indicator on the right hand side there just there so as the battery goes down that will lose a bar there's three bars on there and once it gets to zero it will obviously shut off after a limited amount of time because the battery's dead and also if you've not used the machine and it's turned on for i think it's half an hour it will actually shut itself off as well so not only is it waterproof it will actually shut itself off if it's inactive for 30 minutes now i'm holding the camera so i'm doing one-handed here but i've just laid out three targets on the floor here we've got a screw a silver piece of metal stud and sorry about the shadows it's a cat badge sorry about the shadows again yes yeah, a cat badge there so let's just see how the machine performs so let's start with the screw as you can see if that shadow's not in the way let me just move around right there you go so that's giving a grunt because it's a ferrous metal now you might be able to see that in the middle there as well, I forgot to say. That is like a depth indicator, which you probably wouldn't take much notice of. As I move the coil up, there's three bars on that depth indicator, and as I move it down, get close to the object. It's two, and then one. So the screw comes up as ferrous, as it should do, and it's red on the LED. Now the silver stud is coming up as a nice target, but it's only in the middle target, which is yellow on the LED. You might not be able to see the colour on the LED. But that's the target tone and where silver comes up. So I would expect hammered coins, if you were lucky enough to go over hammered coins, to be on the middle, the middle one there. And then the cat badge. Lovely time for a cat badge. But again, that's coming up in the the top one where it says high and low value coins in the manual. And that's a higher tone than the silver. So the silver is yellow. Cat badge is green. Um, oh, and I didn't mention that's got a pinpointing um, function on it. Actually, let's just show you the pinpointing function. So, turn it on. And 
us this target button here. Just hold that down. And that will pinpoint the item for you in the ground. So, uh, sorry about that, I missed that before. Now, I'm going to go over, I'm going to do an air test now. So you'll actually be able to see how the machine performs on loads of different targets. All good targets that you might go over in a field. So um, we'll go on to part two in a minute. But that was just to show you the features of the machine. So hopefully that's been helpful. Really easy to, to use. Just hold the button down to turn it off. And there we have it. So on to part two. Ladies and gents, it's time to do the air test on the Nocta Macro MIDI Horde, the children's detector. So I've got the detector set up now and it's on three, which is full sensitivity. There's three settings for the sensitivity or the depth, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to put a number of artifacts in front of the coil, um, probably start at around eight inches and work our way down. Um, ranging from a cat badge, which is the largest item I've got. I've got rings, I've got coins, and I've got all the way down to cut quarters, um, silver hammered. So we're going to just do an air test, see how it performs. So let's start with the cat badge. So bear with me, I'm just going to get my bearings on the ruler. You would probably won't be able to see the readings, but we're going to start 200 mil. So 200 mil is there little tiny beep but we're going to work our way in to 175 starting to pick up a little bit proper there down to six inches 150 so at 150 six inches the cat badge is being read quite well by the midi horde and then at 125 mil, which is five inches, it's picked up no problem whatsoever. So the cat badge at five to six inches, no problem. We'll go to a two pence next. So obviously I would expect this not to be registered at 200 mil. Coming down to 175. 150 right so the two pens has just been picked up at six inches five inches four inches so the two pens at six inches you might you may just about pick up about five inches, no problem. Next, we will go for a silver ring. This is 99% silver. It's actually an old shilling that I made into a ring. So I'm gonna start at 200 mil, eight inches, nothing there. Go into 175. Seven inches, nothing, six inches. Little faint six inch bleak, but you probably miss it. Five inches. Just about picking up a little bit more at five inches. And four inches is where the silver ring sits. So four inches for the silver ring. Straight onto the gold ring. This is a wedding band. Quite a thick one, it's my own. <laughs> right, so start at eight inches. To seven inches. To six inches. Again, it's just about picking up at six inches. Five inches. Five inches is where that sits. Four inches, easy. Five inches. Yes, six inches. Just about for the gold wedding band. Just 
going to get the silver ring in again, just going at five inches on the silver ring. Faint. So the silver ring, still quite thick, but that's sitting at four inches. So the gold was picked up better than the silver ring. Right, next, again, going down in um, size, we're going to go for a pound coin. So if you're detecting on the beach with your children, you want to be finding pound coins. So let's start again, eight inch, seven inch, Ooh, slight beep at seven inch, six inch, little bit more, five inch. So you'd be digging out five inches and four inches. No problem for a pound coin. So five, Five inches, four to five inches is where you're at with a pound coin. We'll go to a medieval buckle next. Nice medieval buckle made of bronze. Eight inches. Seven. Six. Slight beep at six inches. Five inches. So you'd be digging out five inches, four inches. So four to five inches is where you're at for a small medieval buckle. That's the size. Next, we'll go on to a silver stud, probably Georgian. So we'll start at eight inches, seven, Six, slight beep, five, just about, four, four inches, no problem, three inches, so three to four inches on the silver stud. I'm going to go for a thimble next, this is quite a small one, but it's a children's one or, or a lady's thimble. Eight, seven, six, five, slight beep on five, four, and it's kind of telling you that's an iron tone. Interesting on the thimble. But at four inches, small thimble. So I'd say six inches for a normal size thimble and you'll be picking it up. Right, next we've got a small spur, medieval spur. So let's try this at eight inches. Six, sorry, seven, six, five, Four, three. So three inches you'd probably dig. Two inches you'd definitely dig again. It's picking up slight iron toe. And the size of that in my fingers there. It's quite thin stem obviously. So uh, three to four inches with that one. Right, that just leaves me with the hammered coins. Now I've got one full hammered, one half and one quarter. The half and the full hammered are about the same size. So I'll start with the full hammered. This is a sovereign penny, Henry the Seventh. So I'm going to do the flat side. Eight inch. Seven inch. Six inch. 5 inch, slight beep, 4 inch, so 4 inches you probably get that, just about, and then 3 inches, no problem, 3 to 4 inches for a small hammered sovereign penny, then we go on to the cut half which is bent, so that might make a difference, 
it is a long cross medieval penny so let's start eight oh we've got a slight peep at eight inches seven hmm nothing so that might be an, an odd beep nothing at seven or eight i'd say six five four yeah four inches just about three inches definitely so three to four inches the same as a silver and penny like i say it's about the same size that this cut half so there you go and lastly you cut quarter very tiny in my fingers make sure i hold this for the big side so nothing eight i would have thought seven six little beat five picking up little tiny bit four bit more three probably dig at three i would have said two so two to three inches you'd be picking that up under the ground for a cut quarter with this machine now just so you know if you're right on top of an object the machine sounds like this quite a sweet sound so there's a whole range of artifacts there that i've shown you on an air test um hopefully it's been useful um knocked a macro midi hoard is one of the best children's machines on the market so um hopefully that's uh, persuaded you to go for the Nocta macro midi hoard so there you have it guys and girls the air test for the Nocta macro midi hoard it's available from www.unearthuk.co.uk on the website at i think it's just around the 115 pound mark if you give graham and mel a ring at unearthed uk they will probably be able to sort you out something on the delivery costs, etc, etc. I can't promise anything, but have a word with them. They'll always help where they can. So hopefully that's been helpful. Um, please check out my other reviews on the Detecting World Review channel, CIS11. And until the next time, thank you. Bye for now.